Frank Watson Wood was born in 1862 in Berwick upon Tweed. He was born into a family who owned two hotels, which were known as the Woods Hotels, and they were also known as being a military and navy family. His autobiography notes that he began work at the age of 13 at a grocer's, but soon left that behind to study under James Wallace at the Berwick Art School. He later went on to become the head of the School of Art at Holwick for 10 years. He later in 1902 moved to Portsmouth to specialise in drawing marine subjects and soon sold many of his paintings to King Edward VII and in 1939 was appointed as King George VI's official artist on his trip to Canada. So today we're on the art bus and we're seeing what other people think of Frank W. Wood's art. So what does it make you think of when you see it? Um, well, uh, the first one uh, is a war scene. Uh, big ships, British Navy I'm guessing. Uh, in a sea there's explosions, it's uh, lots of shades of blue, very um, overcast, so it's got to be Britain, it's mm. got to be rubbish weather. But the, uh, the bright orange flame, although the reproduction probably is a, a little muted, the original I imagine would be a lot more shocking, so the orange is in stark contrast to that overall grey blue tone. So full of action, lots of things going on, the seas churned up, um, the kind of thing that, you know, stirs your loins and makes you want to sign up and uh, that being part of the purpose, I guess, of war artists was not only to report what they saw but to, to inspire people. Frank Wood was also known as a follower of the Glassites religion, more specifically the Scottish Glassites. He was known to donate money to keep the charity running, however the religion has now disbanded. One of his grandfathers helped set up the religion, his name was John Sandyman. The Glassites had many rules which included on Sundays that all members would have to spend the day together and have soup as their main meal that day. He heavily followed the religion up until his death in 1952. Um, the other ones are more um, relaxing, pastoral, their everyday scenes of a river. So the only connection is, yes, there's water, but these are inland, not in the open sea. You've got uh, the bridge, you've got uh, commerce. This is when boats were regularly used to convey goods before heavy goods vehicles and all that kind of stuff became the norm. Um, so these are more relaxing, the kind of thing you could look at and just go away into a daydream and imagine what it was like to be in a steamer uh, going up the River Thames or up the Mersey or wherever, you know, up the Clyde and how people lived and how the architecture of the dockside was very different to what it is now. We spoke to some students at Fort Valley College to see what they thought of Frank Watson Wood's art. So what do you feel when you look at painting? Uh, I feel very calm. It kind of reminds me of like a nice scene. It looks kind of homely, like familiar, somewhere I've probably seen before. I feel like it's a bit boring. I think it lacks a lot of colour, which I don't know, I like about colour in art. It kind of looks like something I would, like my gran would hang up in her living room. I mean, it's nice. I think there's a lot of detail there, but I just think it would like a bit more colour in it. Uh, I feel like it's really relaxing and it's, um, it's like a calm scene. And like, when I was looking at it, it sort of reminds me of the fourth rail bridge. I don't know if it's got anything to do with that, but um, that's that's sort of what it reminds me of. But yeah, it's a really like, it's a really relaxing scene, and it's got like a good atmosphere to it. Through this short journey into Mr. Wood's life, we've spoke to many individuals to see what they think of his work and how it speaks to them as art students and art followers. Frank Watson Wood sadly passed away in 1953 at his son's home in Strathfair, Perth. He is however still known locally and nationally as a Scots artist who paved a new way into watercolour painting and is a great teacher for those he took under his wing and the family he sadly had to leave behind. This is one Scot who will not be forgotten.